Oh, I want to get back to the classification system. So when it changed back in the day, it was three, two, one. Simply that. Three, two, and one. So your lineups were three, two, two, one, or three, three, one, one, or two, 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 two. That's it. That's all you can run. And uh, when that changed, you know, it went from 0.5 to 3.5. Now you've got seven different classifications. Everything changed. And it's, I believe, very different then than it is now. The first, um, I'll give you an example. The first um, classification system, I'm probably going to blow this, but it was Anne-Marie Glenn and Diane Bulger and possibly a couple other people that wrote it. And we all got reclassed at Best of the West San Diego. It was the November tournament of 1990. And I had been playing two years as a one. And um, I really didn't think it was fair. There were plenty of ones out there that just, they owned me. I, you know, I, I had way less function than, than most. And so I thought there was a possibility that I could go down, but I really didn't know. Yeah. And we're in this line in the hotel. And it's a nervous line. Because some people that are threes are worried they're going to get classed out. And others are just worried they're going to get classed up. And there goes their playing time. And now they had a whole, um, a whole speculation, uh, I'm sorry, stipulation for, for a trunk function. Before that, trunk didn't matter. For instance, a guy named Dom Clemens from Minnesota was a class one. When it was all said and done, they made him a two. And that's the guy I had to guard forever because we were playing man to man, which is stupid now. But was this going? Um, this was like international, right? Like they were going to um, half point system. Yeah, no, that that started here in the U.S. Oh, okay, and then international adopted it. Yeah, we went international with the half point system. Within a year, everybody adopted it. Okay, and also. Also, there was a big movement at that time at Nationals in 90 um, to make it eight and a half points to include at least one of your guys that got bumped up. Oh, so okay. they got voted down, and so it stayed at eight. But anyway, um, I'm in that line, and Nils is right behind me. Nils, you know, all-world all class two, all-world track athlete who was not beaten in his his track classification for something like four or seven years in sprint. He just owned it, owned everybody. Wow. And so he and our teammates and housemates, and we're talking, and he's telling me, I'm not going up. I don't have a trunk. I don't have this. I don't have that. I'm like, are you sure? I said, you're strong as hell. He goes, nope, it's about what you have functionally, and I don't have it. And he goes, and I think you're going down. And I'm like, really? So I'm, I'm kind of and I went in first, and people are coming out of that room, Tim, and they got tears in their eyes, They're like, fuck, I'm done. <laughs> and I go in, and they spent a half hour with me. I, okay, Tim, this, this will hit home for you. I was you 20 years before you, okay? <laughs> yeah, I know exactly I what that, you mean. I was that tweener in the room they couldn't figure out. And so... As you probably well know, you have much more function than I do. But the thing, things have changed. Back then, finally, Anne-Marie looks at me, and she goes, Chris, I can't quite figure it out how you do what you do. I think you're a .75. And I went, okay, what does that mean? And Diane says to me, she goes, well, we're going to watch you on the court before we put a label on you. Is that okay? Because we think you're right in between. I went, okay. I'm fine with that. So now I'm thinking, do I hold back? No, it's probably not a good idea. Blah, blah, blah. But at least I got to play initially as a point five. And Emily says to me, she goes, she goes, what do you think you are? And I went, really? You're asking me? I said, well, I'm a point five. And I explained that to them because they knew the people I was comparing myself to who were definitely ones and definitely had more function than me. And it worked. I've been a point five ever since. Right on. So you're like one of the one of the OG point fives. Right. Yeah, it's weird because the um 
classification system, I mean, I think uh, if we're going to be including the triple amps that have been kind of sneaking their way into the sport, it's uh, we're going to have to do something to kind of decompress everything because it, you know, there's there's guys that are like C8 quads that are getting classed out, but they're letting, yeah, right. you know, guys with one perfect hand um, in. And it's like, man, we got to do something to kind of decompress a, the system. I have a potential solution, but most people don't want to hear it. Yeah, um, what's that? Just, um, all the quad amps who you believe are borderline, um, make them fours and still allow eight points. And you can have a four, but it has to be, it's a non-spinal cord thing. It has to be a four because they have probably both complete shoulders, one or two complete arms or hands. No, not, not more than one complete hand. But you get the point. If you did that and still made it eight points, that would level the playing ground, I think. Yeah, that was uh, kind of my solution was, uh, you just got to add a four class, and I, I would even be open to um, adding a zero class. Okay. Yeah, just a straight up zero well, we class. Have that because of age, but well, what do you mean? well, I mean, internationally, you can only achieve that if you're a point five uh, female. Oh, I see. And I you've been you. you've been yeah, seeing yeah, yeah, that yeah. a lot more and more. Is like people yeah, yeah. countries countries are actively seeking zero class females um you know japan's got one the u.s has one um and that's that's kind of uh the um i don't know what you would call that like a see i guess a secret it's weapon it's like a, it's like a secret weapon it's, 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 it's inclusion and it's an equalizer right right but there are guys that have you know zero tricep zero wrist flexion and extension so they just got a completely floppy right. wrist you know and um right, right. having that wrist is kind of a kind of a big deal it changes the way you you're able to push your your wheels the way you have to glove up and right. um so you know i just had uh, had matt lewis living here for uh, almost two months on and off and um what you know great dude and I'm not saying he's illegal or a four. I'm not going to make those decisions. However, when you when you are living with someone or you're around them enough, maybe in a hotel room or what have you, um, you see stuff and you go, "Damn, <laughs> he can get out of that chair in a heartbeat," yeah. you know. And he's got no legs, and he just can like do a little um, a dip and swing his whole body over into another chair or onto the couch or whatever. Yeah. I know you're talking. I mean, I had, I had Roscoe, I had Roscoe from Columbia with me for a while. Oh, there you go. So I know exactly how that is. So, so when, but you see that stuff and you go, Oh yeah. And they play the same game on the same court as we do. 